Hey y'all, so I'm working on a couple of different things right now. So in this video, we are going to be putting the window in. Um, we're going to be putting up the walls into shiplap panels. So I've already got a bunch of the, the three, three fourth inch plywood that came in the trailer. I have sectioned that off and cut it into eight inch boards to shiplap all of the walls and it's turned out pretty good so far. I'm excited to show y'all. Um, we're gonna be painting those because I have a champagne white color um, that I've painted all of those shiplap boards in. Um, we're putting those up on the walls. We're putting some of the bathroom walls up and I'll show y'all what I'm doing with that in just a second. Um, we are also going to be putting insulation in the back door which is kind of like a part two to the first video where we put all we prepped really well and we put all of the insulation up around the walls well in this video we're going to be doing the back door also um, it's just kind of a little project but i wanted to hold off on doing that um, and we're also going to be putting in our first power hookup so let me show you a little bit of what i got going on right now Okay, so this is where I have put in the power hookup. It is a 15 amp Stokio, I think is how you say it. I will leave the, the Amazon link for it in the description because I just purchased it on Amazon for about 20 bucks, I think. It was a pretty good, decent price. It is not a traditional 30 amp hookup like a lot of RVs have. It's just a 15 amp for right now and, and that's really all that I feel like I'll need for the time being um, it runs my my light that I have in there it runs my little 200 watt heater it, it does everything that I need it to do as of right now so we got that hooked up <laughs> So this is the two inch hole saw bit that I was telling you about that I used. It's still got some insulation and some metal pieces in there. It worked out pretty good. Um, I can leave the link for this in the description also. Um, I got some footage of me doing that, but what I should have done, and I'll go ahead and let y'all know, um, what I should have done is tape off the section around this and I should have done that on the window also um, I didn't have any issues on the window using the jigsaw but I had a little bit of trouble using that hole saw bit when I was cutting out this power hookup just because I'm thinking that it being a 0.30 metal it's a little bit thicker than what I've seen on other YouTube videos where they just use that whole that two inch hole saw bit and they go right on through that board and and it does just fine well mine kept getting jammed up it would it would go a little bit of the ways through and then it would stop so I had to use the jigsaw after I got the initial puncture in there I had to use the jigsaw to cut it the rest of the way out and I I know you can see that I had my first little nick happen when I was doing that so for future reference I'm thinking if I would have taped off this whole section really well that may not have happened um, but I, I didn't do that so you know for future reference anybody that is is wanting to do something of that nature I suggest to tape off that whole section before you just start you know with those power tools because that may help y'all avoid getting a little nick in the side right there it's not super noticeable but it is there so um what what else we're doing right now just to move on to the next subject um i've took that that back ramp part of the door off because we're going to be insulating this back door um kind of like the part two that I was telling y'all about there's the piano hinges that came off I just used the drill and took that whole piano hinge off and then I removed that that back ramp section I'm probably going to be reusing these aluminum um metal strips I'm gonna have to cut it down to size and then fit it right in that section after I insulate and paint because I am going to take off 
the rest of that trim and then um, figure out what I'm going to do on this back door. I know I'm going to paint it and seal it. I haven't decided the exact color because I'm going to need it to act as a wall when the the deck is up and then it's also going to have to be sealed really really well i'm thinking about using epoxy to to seal it after i paint because it's going to have to act as a wall and as a, a back deck so we'll get into that a little bit deeper in one of the next videos but for this one we are going to be taking those boards off and insulating Okay, so I had a little bit of trouble getting this very, very back panel off the back door. And that's because I noticed that because these back doors are spring assist, those springs, if it's not weighted down enough on the end, those springs will just automatically pop that door closed. And this door is pretty, it's pretty strong, pretty heavy. So there is some extra pieces of plywood right there underneath the initial piece that's weighing it down on the back and they were literally fitted right in between those beams so in order to i've got all all the screws out and stuff obviously but in order to keep this door open i'm just kind of propping it up right there on the end so i've already measured out the distance between the beams on the back door and we're going to get started cutting those insulation pieces Okay, so I just got done insulating the back door um, in that little section right there. I just used a couple of extra pieces of foam just because I was trying to use as much of the, the scraps as possible. So all the other sections are just cut to length. I think it was like 76 by 14. And um, that section right there has just got a bunch of spare pieces, but they all fit together pretty good. I kind of did it like a like a puzzle. So now I'm fixing to put the back panels back on, and then we'll get to painting. All right, guys. So I have chose to go ahead and put in the window before I put up the walls. I feel like it's just going to be easier to cut through that metal and the insulation. Well, I've actually took the insulation out on that part, but I may put it back in. I haven't done decided just yet but I feel like it'll be a lot easier to cut through that metal with the jigsaw without there being an extra layer of wood behind it so right now I have the window frame placed up on the wall because I'm trying to get an accurate outline um, let me show you exactly what I got going on so I chose to get a 14 by 22 width mirror so the the width is 14 and the length is 22. I chose to get that size because the beams in this particular trailer are 16 inches apart. So I figured that the 14 will fit perfectly right in between the beams without me having to cut into the actual frame. So this is what the window came with. It came in the Rec Pro packaging box. This is the actual window, the 14 by 22. I've got the instructions here along with um, some screws and a marker. Um, I chose to get some butyl tape. Now the instructions say for these windows that you don't actually have to use butyl tape when you're putting the window in for, for sealing purposes. Um, but I chose to do it anyway because I feel like a little bit of extra sealant in there won't hurt anything but they say that it has it already has a layer of like rubber seal that goes around it that should be plenty enough it should be just fine like that but like I said I chose to go ahead and get some extra butyl seal anyway so I got my jigsaw I have my drill ready to go and I'm gonna carry y'all along for the process so I will get right back to y'all and we'll see how it turns out
so I got the jigsaw loaded. I chose to use, out of all of the blades, these ones say that they're for wood and plastic. This one is kind of smaller and it says, I don't know if you can see that. It says that it's made for metal, basic for metal. So I, yo I used one of those blades and I already screwed the holes for the frame. It was a little bit off, but that's okay. I have about a quarter of an inch to work with, so I think it's gonna work out perfect. All right, are y'all ready? Y'all, that was the most nerve-wracking thing I think I have ever done. But good news is we have a window now. It fits perfect. Let me show you what's going on on the inside. Alright, so here it is on the inside. I just have to cut out the window holes for the insulation so I can pop that insulation back in. And one more thing that I got done today. So now I have a screen door. Isn't that awesome? So it's the magnetic kind. It just magnetizes right down the middle. And I got the Velcro put on at the top. It's a little bit long, so I'm gonna cover that up with, when I put the walls up. But I just have to Velcro the sides down. And we got us the screen door. Pretty awesome. Okay, so we had a storm that came through a couple of days ago. And I kind of freaked out because I noticed that there was a small drip in the very corner of the window where the glass slides up and down. And I purchased a rain guard on Amazon. It was only like $4, but it works really well. It came in, it was aluminum colored. So I just used a wire brush and I spray painted it once the first time. The paint didn't stick very well, so I took that off with a Dremel and scuffed it up a little bit, and then when I spray painted it a second time, it did really well. So I found some machine screws laying around because it did not come with those. It just come just the aluminum rain guard, but like I said, it was only $4, so um, I found some machine screws, put that on there. And it looks pretty good, it did really well. But I'm thinking, I don't know how necessary it was because I noticed that I'm pretty sure the reason why the corner of the window was leaking is because I did not push the glass up all the way before I sealed it. I just kinda pushed it up and, and pushed that lever to seal it, but I didn't push it up all the way. So that may have been why, why it was doing that. Um, but it seems to have worked pretty well regardless. Just make sure, you know, when you push that window in with those type of windows, you have to make sure you seal them really, really well. Um, but I haven't noticed any kind of drips in the corners and that rain guard looks pretty good up there. All right, so this is me getting ready to cut the 3 4 inch plywood that came in the trailer. After I took those out, I put those aside and saved all of the screws, the wood tapping screws, and all of the sheets of plywood so I could cut those boards into 8 inch pieces of shiplap. So 
I wouldn't really suggest doing it this way. If you can, I would suggest either using a table saw or some, some saw horses. I found some on Amazon for like $58, but I was just so impatient that I didn't want to wait. So I just got a couple of ramps and had at it. I mean, I used one of my circular saws that I had purchased a little while back, less than a year ago. Um, so I used one of my circular saws. I used a, a T, like a, a T-shaped measure, and um, made sure all of those lines were real, real straight. And then I got out my circular saw and cut all of the boards into eight inch sections. So it turned out really, really well. But like I said, I don't suggest doing it like this, especially if you have back problems of any sort. I mean, I just pushed on through and got it all done. This is about a 100, 110 square foot trailer. So I mean, it did take a little while. Um, it was probably one of the hardest projects thus far but I, I just went ahead and did it. I pushed through. I cut all of those be or boards into 8 inch pieces and put them up on the walls and it took me about two days total but it turned out really really well. So it looks pretty crazy in here. <laughs> I have purchased some of that. Let's see what it's called. Um, no prep, no heat, pill and stick adhesive. It's actually some of that sound deadening automotive um, insulation, sound deadening type material. It's real thick black rubber. Um, I bought one pack of it just to kind of see see if I liked it or not. For I think it was about sixty four dollars for fifty six square feet. And what I'm doing is, I, I don't think I want to put, it's a pretty heavy material and I don't really want to add that much weight to the trailer, but around where I'm going to be putting my bed towards the back, I just kind of, over some of the, the beams and over the insulation obviously, I just kind of stuck it up there in certain places. Um, I've also been working on cutting the planks for the wall. You can see right there, I have, a, I have one that I've painted. I haven't painted all of them yet. Um, I think I may just decide to paint the rest of them when I get them up there. Um, but I have went ahead and started cutting the planks. I'm cutting them in 8 inch sections because I want to do um, 8 inch shiplap along all of the walls in this um, champagne off-white color. So I think next what I'm going to be doing is cutting some more of that plywood for the walls and putting it up on the wall, kind of getting a feel for how I need to layer it because obviously I'm not going to put it exactly up where that plywood was. I'm going to have to um, not layer, it's like stagger them along the along the edges so that they're not exactly exactly straight. I think you know, you probably have a good idea of what I'm talking about. I'm going to put like a, a long beam on the bottom and then I'm going to put have two in the middle on top of it and then put another long one just so they're kind of staggered and they'll look a little bit better that way. Um, when I start putting them up I think I'm going to go ahead and get a nickel and space them out uh, about because it is called nickel gap shiplap so I'm either going to get like a nickel or a quarter and, or something like that to measure the spaces in between and then I'm going to go ahead and start putting them back up on the walls so I'm going to I'm going to record some of that while I'm doing cutting the plywood while I'm doing that and putting it up on the wall and we will see how it turns out I will check back in with y'all later okay so this is what I have got done so far on the walls, I've got all of the back walls finished up till up to the top, which I'm going to leave like that for now so I can do a little bit more of the wiring that's gonna run right across the top. And then I'm gonna put some trim right there where that little space is. Um, 
I have not finished up this wall. I just kind of got it started with one of the panels, but I have a bunch of, I don't know if you can see them, they're kind of covered up right now. I have a bunch of smaller panels that I'm going to trim to size and, and put right there in that spot. I'm also probably going to do this wall from the Vinos over in the same style shiplap panels that I've I've done the other walls in. Um, I have to do a little bit more at the top. I got some done around the window, which was pretty difficult. Um, right here in this section is where the shower is going to be. And I, I'm not going to talk too much about that yet in this episode, but my plan for the shower is I want to um, plank the shower in cedar wood and like long, long pieces instead of the the pieces that are going across. I want to do those in um, long pieces around the shower, which is probably going to go from right there to, so I'll have a vent in the shower if needed, um, right there to about, I haven't decided exactly how far I'm going to take it over, but probably about probably about right there. So it's going to be that, that corner for the shower. <clears throat> um, I did not record all of the process. I did record some, some of me cutting the planks, but they were a lot harder to put in than what I expected. Um, I had my stepdad out here helping me, um, put some of those up because I was doing my best to space them. I was doing like the nickel gaps, um, and trying to, to screw them in right where the beams are. And that just wasn't as, as easy of a task as what I thought it would be. So my stepdad helped me out a lot with that part. And um, we're going to finish up a little bit later when he gets off work. So I just wanted to check in with y'all, show y'all what I got going on right now. Um, I've been using that wood putty to put in some that's not the that's not the best um that's probably like the <laughs> worst spot that i have going on right here but my goal is that i'm probably going to have something put in front of that so and also when i start painting i already started on a couple of the boards because before i cut them because i wanted to see what color the paint was um, so I just kind of started doing that and then I decided to finish when I had all of the other other boards up. It would just be a lot easier to paint this wall, you know, all at one time when all of the boards were up. So I'm fixing to get started on doing that. I've been putting a little bit of putty in some of the holes. Um, and then I'm going to get started on painting. I do have some of this mold and mildew resistant see, it's a mold and mildew resistant additive that i'm going to be adding to the paint that i got and um the paint that i'm using is a kills please don't mind that messy garage y'all but the paint that i'm using is a kills tribute color i really really like it um, it didn't say that it was mold and mildew resistant, so that's why I had that additive that I'm going to be adding to it. Um, I may decide to seal the wood after I paint it, but I also have some of this chalked aged glaze stuff that I'm really, really thinking about using because I'm going for a farmhouse shiplap kind of look on the walls um, I decided to keep the pl uh, plywood panels that were already in there to save on weight because they're a lot lighter than what that what you'd find at Home Depot the shiplap pine panels there are usually anywhere from like a half inch to an inch thick and I just knew that cutting those plywood boards into eight inch pieces would save on weight it would save on the cost of money um, so it's turned out really well so far as far as making them look a little bit better i'm going to be using that that champagne white color and then i'm probably going to either like sand some places to distress it and also use some of this chalked aged glaze paint on there so i can make it look a little bit older antique looking farmhouse vibe 
um, I think it's going to turn out really well. So I will get back in touch with y'all or I will touch base with y'all again whenever some of that is finished. Bye. Okay, so this is me sanding those plywood shiplap panels after I painted the first layer because I, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to distress that wood a little bit to make it look a little bit more like a farmhouse rustic vibe. But um, I actually wanted to go ahead and sand it also because I noticed that there were some places where I had used that plastic wood filler that was still kind of coming through and, and a little bit noticeable. So I went ahead and sanded and then I painted a second layer on top of that and it turned out really well. I'm actually glad that I did that. Um, I, the second layer of paint I ended up not sanding after that because it just looked really really good the way that it was. of the v-nose which is going to be the bathroom area i think i already told y'all um, once before that i wanted to do the shower it's going to be the um driver's side corner of the v-nose is going to be where the shower is because i have that aluminum sidewall vent right there also um, but i'm going to do the shower in a cedar plank I haven't figured out the exact dimensions that I'm going to do that, but I know I'm going to do it um, right here where the door comes all the way across is going to be where there, I'm going to section it off with a wall, about like a half wall, and the doorway is going to be over here. So there's going to be some kind of separation between the bathroom and the the rest of the living area but i also wanted to do it in in like a different style this is a pretty small trailer it's about 100 110 square foot so i wanted there to be a very distinct difference or separation to the rooms i didn't really want to do the bathroom in the the same shiplap that i did the rest of the trailer in for that very reason so I found some recycled b-board that we had left over from a remodel project about like five or six years ago and I cleaned it up really really well. So as you can tell right here where it's not exactly even because they were different sizes but I am really happy with I ha this right here is a different piece than what this is but I'm really really happy with how it blends. I cut that cut that v-board right in the middle where there's a line and you really can't even tell that it's two separate pieces. Let me give y'all a close-up real quick. Okay, so right there you can tell on the top where that beadboard was a different length and I didn't cut it exactly even. I wasn't too worried about it because what I'm going to do right there in the middle where I have the wallpaper on the top, you can see I ordered one piece as a sample and I went ahead and ordered a couple of more. They came in rolls so I have them... Um, on the ground flattening out right now before I put them up. But what I'm gonna do right there in the middle is I found a another recycled piece of trim. Y'all, anytime I can find recycled or reused um, materials, it makes me like super excited. Not just because I, I like to save on money, but because I love to customize stuff. So anytime I find something that I can reuse and like customize, it makes me so excited. But um, what I'm going to do right there in the middle where the wallpaper is going to be on top, the beadboard is going to be on bottom, I painted this thick piece of trim in like a taupe beige color. I don't know if you can see that. And I actually added some pearlescent mica powder to it just to, to give it like a, a really good blended, blended kind of look. So what I'm going to do with that is put that right there in the middle after I put the, the rest of the wallpaper up. 
and I'm probably going to do the same thing on a section of this corner also. When I figure out the exact dimensions that I'm going to do the shower area, that's going to be my outside shower, by the way, guys. little sneak peek. But um, anyway, so the... Um, the dimensions of the shower that I figure out I'm going to do, I'm going to put the rest of, I have a panel that's going to be for this other corner. I have a little bit more beadboard left over and some more trim, and I'm just going to finish measuring that, that other half out right there. And I think it's going to blend really, really well. The only part that you can tell where where it's two separate pieces is right there on the top, and that's where I'm going to put the trim, so you're not going to be able to tell after I put that trim up. But I think it blends pretty, pretty well. So I, I painted it the same color as the champagne white that I have the shiplap boards in. And we are fixing to get some Gorilla Glue construction adhesive, spray that on the plywood, and then I'm going to go ahead and put that wallpaper up. And I'm gonna do it pretty quickly, because as you can see right there, I still gotta, I still gotta flatten out some of that wallpaper. All right, see y'all in a second. Okay, so I'm really happy with how that wall turned out. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be doing the same thing on the other side, at least about halfway through that wall. And then the shower is going to be right there in that corner where I kind of have like a bunch of junk right now. But, um, yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out. It looks pretty good. I'd be careful putting up wallpaper because I have ended up having to go over it a couple of times. Um, you can kind of tell on that area where it looks like there's an air bubble. There really isn't. That's just how the wallpaper, and it, it just kind of looks like that from a certain angle. It doesn't look like that from everywhere. But I'm going to also go back over that with, um, like a, a scraper or something flat so I can straighten that out a bit. And I'm also going to be putting some, a different kind of trim around the bottom corner. I just have so much stuff in here right now. But yeah, I'm really happy with how all of the walls turned out, actually. I put some wooden hooks up there on that side of the door, um, just for a little bit of decoration. All right, next project. Okay, so these are the two kinds of flooring underlayment that I have to put down. This one is the three millimeter felt that has a laminate like a laminate waterproof barrier on one side and then it comes with the recycled felt on the other side which is pretty cool it's it seems like it's soft and it'll insulate at least a little bit um this second one that i got now i thought that this kind came with seal tape but it does not so you have to purchase that separately um, I'll go ahead and leave a link for it in the description. I think it was about $30, $40. Um, it's called um, Unicorn Flooring Underlayment, and it's a superior coastal performance moisture barrier. It's about 100 square foot, which should be plenty. Um, it says that you can use it with the luxury vinyl plank laminate, hardwood, um, rigid core, and engineered wood so it should be good to use with just about any kind of flooring that you'd want to put down all right so we're fixing to get started with that and i will see y'all in a minute okay so i just got done rolling out the flooring underlayment that i'm using um, i put the black unicorn foam underlayment as the first layer um, and then i put the felt underlayment on top of it so I'm thinking that this felt underlayment, I ended up putting it with the laminate sheet up. This is the waterproof barrier on this side. Um, I wanted to do it with, with the laminate waterproof barrier facing upwards. Um, I think that this tape is supposed to be for you, for the purpose of putting it this way with the felt side facing up, but I just feel like I didn't want the felt it seems pretty absorbent, so I didn't want the felt facing upwards. I decided to do it with the, the laminate sheet facing up. But, I mean, I'm assuming that that's probably what that white tape strip is for. I just didn't want to do it that way. So, it seems like this black foam, it's waterproof also. They're both supposed to be waterproof barriers. But this black foam seems like it's a little bit 
more absorbent also so that's why I chose to do it with the the black underlayment first and then the the felt recycled felt underlayment on top of it with that laminate sheet facing upwards I just feel like it'd be more waterproof if if that's a thing but um so I suggest if you if you don't want to staple your underlayment down I suggest using some seam tape and I'm probably going to be doing that around the shower area where I, I cut that out for the shower because I'm going to be doing a totally different waterproof membrane where that shower is going to be. So I'm probably going to end up, instead of just stapling, I'm probably going to end up putting some seam tape around that shower area also. But the stapler that I got, I got it off Amazon for like $11 and it's, work, it's working really, really well. I chose to staple some areas on the sides but I also decided to go ahead and staple some of these areas where that first layer is rolled out on that side and then I rolled out the second layer on this side and it overlaps just a little bit you can't really tell as far as like the the smoothness but I did staple it in some places of, around in the center where that overlaps and I like this stapler it did really really well because you can't even feel where those staples are it's probably because there's two layers of underlayment but you can't even feel where those staples are let me give you a close-up real quick okay so right here on this back area and then also by the front door where I have this aluminum trim I actually took that off I didn't video that part, but I took that trim off with my screwdriver, those um, square head bits. I took it off with my screwdriver and then I put that underlayment down, both of them, and I put that trim back on to kind of hold it down along the door. I also did that right there at the front door as well. But right here in the middle where those underlayments meet, I went ahead and started stapling in some places. And as you can tell, that staple, because there's two layers right there, it went all the way through and you cannot even tell that it's there. And you definitely won't be able to see it when I put that flooring down. Okay, so what I am doing right now is I am measuring out the space that I want to put the, the lower cabinets or the countertop. So as you can see, I already have the flooring underlayment placed in here. Um, I have not, I went ahead and started stapling it. I have not bought the flooring that I want to put down in here yet because, um, for several reasons actually. So when it comes to laminate wood plank or vinyl sheet flooring i would just suggest to do a little bit of your own research but when you put in any kind of floating floor you have to be really careful about what you put on top of it if you put any kind of heavy countertops on top of a floating floor then it's liable to crack and to come apart especially when you're in a moving vehicle like a cargo trailer or a van so what i'm going to be putting down is laminate sheet flooring so those are a little bit thinner if i really wanted to i could probably go ahead and put all the flooring in and it would be fine with the countertop sitting on top of it but the another reason that I'm going to go ahead and do that though is because from what I've measured out I'm going to need about three cases for this um about a hundred square foot trailer so or I'm not going to need a whole three cases I'm actually only going to need two and a half but the third case needing like that extra i don't know 20 square foot would just be an extra case i'd have to purchase because i'd needed you know about 50 to 20 more square foot so what i'm going to try to do is go ahead and place all of the cabinets in here around the edge of the wall where i want those to be and i'm going to see if i can um get it down to about two cases of flooring because if I can just go ahead and purchase two cases and do all of the flooring that I need done 
then that would be a lot better off than purchasing three and having a, a half a case left. Plus, you're not going to be able to see any of the flooring underneath the cabinets, as well as there are chances of sitting heavy things on top of that flooring and it coming apart. So, like I said, what I'm doing right now is measuring out the spaces that I'm going to have the countertops. So, what I'm going to do right here... Let's see if you can see it a little bit better if I back up. What I'm going to do right there up against where I have the bed placed is put a tall cabinet. And it's going to be about 6'6". Six, six. So on, this is a 7 foot interior trailer. But I want to give a little bit of room to put the ceiling in. But I also want it to go all the way up to the top. So that's going to be kind of like a cabinet that divides the kitchen and the bed area. So these are some drawer pulls that I've already purchased. They're 20 inches long, I believe, and they're about 250. Um, the weight limit for them is about 250 pounds. So they're 250 pound drawer slides. I'm going to be putting two drawers in that cabinet right there next to the bed. My goal being, because this is a pretty high bed right there. I know you can see I have a ladder on the outside of it, which is just kind of cool. I did that for the vibes. But as of right now, I'm having to use a another ladder when I do decide to get up there. I, I've kind of already started decorating and putting some stuff in here, but um, my goal is when I put that cabinet in here, I'm going to have those drawer slides so I can pull out two of the drawers and have, instead of just leaving them as open drawers, I'm going to put a wooden piece on top of it so I can use those two drawers as steps to get up to the bed. So that's my goal for those that those are about 20 inches out from the wall now the countertop these are the pieces of okay so we got cut off there for a second but what i was saying is these are two pieces of ambrosia maple that i ordered for the countertops i'm really really feeling the ambrosia ambrosia maple out of all of the choices that's what i wanted to go with so i ordered it from a website called woodcraft and when they came in it had um timber link slabs on the back um, i'll go ahead and leave the link for that website in the description below they have a ton of different wood slabs and and options um, but as you can see this one is the live edge front piece and this one is the center piece now they went ahead and came with the pocket hole jigs or the pocket hole screws so you can connect them and what I thought was really really cool was both of them are eight inch pieces so together it it adds up to about six in, 16 inches from the wall well the piece of ramp door that came off the back right here when i was putting the insulation in i had to to take that back ramp piece off well that piece right there is exactly 16 inches wide so it, it was 16 inches wide and it was actually 69 inches long so when i cut that piece of back ramp in half it it measures exactly 16 inches from the wall and about 36 inches high which is literally perfect to use on each end of my countertop now i'll probably end up getting a piece of like birch birch plywood or something of that nature to use on the front because I have a, a, a whole different idea of what I'm going to do on the front. I bought some sliding barn doors and um, I, I'm debating on whether I want to get a vessel sink or a farmhouse sink. But um, as far as using these two pieces on the side of the countertop, I just thought that was pretty cool that it was literally the perfect size. Now you may have a different idea of what you want to do for your countertops, but um, that's just a little fun fact that I wanted to include. So I just got done cutting those in half, and I'm going to go ahead and sand them, paint them, and then I will get back with y'all later. 
So I wanted to hop on here real quick and go a little bit more in detail as to why I'm doing my build this way. I'm obviously not a professional and this is a vlog, but there's a very specific reason as to why I'm doing it this way. And I've already went a little bit in detail as to why I've put the flooring underlayment down before I actually put the, the vinyl plank flooring. I wanted to make sure that all of those cabinets on the on the driver's side wall are placed in here before I put that flooring down. So I wanted to get a very specific measurement of how I'm going to do those cabinets. Let me give you a little bit of a close up. All right, so this is the diameter of what the cabinets is going to be. I'm going to have a 20 inch cabinet that goes all the way to the roof right there in that section. And then I'm going to have 16 inches from the wall in countertop right there, as you can see. So this is just kind of the messy version of of what's going on right now but we're definitely going to get into that a lot more in some of the future episodes in the next one we are going to be going over how I placed the bed in here and we're also going to be putting these cabinets in along with probably putting the flooring in next i haven't decided if that's going to be the next the very next video or the one after that because these cabinets are going to be a pretty big job right there all right so i'm excited to see y'all next time